little babies. Thank you, Irene. Thank you, Irene. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Raymond. Richard. Uh, why don't you get us started here on the Civil Mind Sports Show with your opening take for Friday headlines. I might floor the listeners here, but I'm going to go a baseball topic on. Whoa! Friday. <laughs> yeah, I know. And he's Bill's... wearing a Red Sox hat. <laughs> I know. Bill's not here, so I have to do it. But uh, uh, whoever was the brilliant man that said, hey, why don't we sell college kids $9 tickets to the Red Sox-Yankees game to get that place electric, the atmosphere off the charge when Xander Bogarts hit that fucking home run. You saw the kid, the college kid, just chugging beers. You know, that place was on fire last night. It hasn't been like that since 2018. Bravo. Kudos to the front office, whoever made that decision. Yeah, it was on fire. I'm going to piggyback on your take because that was my biggest takeaway from uh, these past several days of Boston sports. However, when you ask the question, who decided to give those $9 tickets? Uh, the market decided it because people are sick of paying $1,000 plus to go to Fenway Park with a family of four. It's mm -hmm. the most expensive ballpark to go in the uh, country in all of sports. And uh, we had uh, WDEI's Lou Merloni, very own, going out there in his... <laughs> fucking parade of tears uh <laughs> trying to get people to the ballpark so that's why they gave away nine dollar tickets but i will agree with you that it was electric whether college fans or not fenway was on fire uh obviously coming on the heels of the patriots bucks brady return that crowd was amazing not just loud and gregorious but they th we talked about on one of the, uh, on the tuesday show after mm -hmm. they cheered him then they booed him and then they rooted for the Patriots. Mac Jones got the bigger ovation. It was just a wise sports crowd in uh, in Foxborough. It's because you think this whole nation is, or not nation, but this region is turning into pink hats because of the winning and everyone being bandwagon fans. And then you see this stuff and you're like, ooh, tip my cap to you fellas. Nice job out there. Well, there you go. And the $9 ticket certainly is going to get the diehard in. And even mm. in Gillette, when they were going for six grand a pop on some of those early prices, Jesus you, uh, you had the wise new england fans in there i don't think philly could pull off something like that so mm -mm. and and i will throw a cherry on top that celtics preseason game one felt like a fucking playoff game mm -hmm. that was the garden was roaring gorman yeah. and scout could not stop talking about it the uh, the magic and the celtics even played like it i mean they were diving for fucking loose balls yeah. were, i mean they were nervous score. it's like whoo yeah everyone shot like shit bad man you know people were playing defense uh boston sports we talked about this at the end of uh, as as the Patriots kind of dynasty came to an end here. Twenty years of success, like we saw, it was never going to stay the same. And we've had just basically one, maybe two years of a downtrodden kind of uh, fan base, and we're already back. We're already back with the excitement of like underdog nice. mentality. Let's fucking go. Doesn't seem like a long time ago, too, because with all the COVID and shit, just yeah. it's, been, it's been so long. It's only been a year, but it just feels like longer. It feels like five, ten years has been like that. Perfect storm. Uh, we'll be touching on that. Uh, obviously, we're going to get to the Red Sox. Hold on. Yank. Hold on. Oh, whoa. Bill? Oh. Where's your take, Bill? Bill, take? Ah, okay, very good. Uh, Bill's opening take is uh, <laughs> go, go get the vaccine, you fucking <laughs> jerk offs. <laughs> Bill's got a sick day uh, because the second I'm playing, jab. I'm playing sick day for once. Sick, yeah, this one actually is a is a proper sick day. I wasn't I wasn't upset that he <laughs> no. Because you and I both were sent on our ass from that fucking vaccine. So yeah, uh, yeah Bill's Bill's opening take is get the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that'll go over well with him. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, we'll be talking Red Sox Yankees wild card game. Like we talked about the, the, the crowd was amazing, but also the game was good. If you're a Red Sox fan, certainly um, in addition to that Red Sox raise here, start up tonight as we're recording Friday, uh, Erod on the mound. Uh, we're looking at that series a little bit. We don't have our baseball guy here, so but not a lot, not enough numbers to, for the baseball crowd to be that happy. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. no. uh, but Stefan Gilmore, the other big news of the week, uh, mm -hmm. released, then traded to the Carolina Panthers. We'll be touching on that. Patriots, Texans coming up. Uh, maybe even a little Celtics talk, maybe a little NBA talk. Ben Simmons, our favorite. Uh, should mm. I, and I didn't put in here the Kyrie Irving news, news either. Uh, so. That's all right. <laughs> you don't have to put that in there. We can just go. Yeah, right I'll go right off the top of that. It's a little NBA news to uh, to finish up the show. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Simple Mind Sports Show. If you're uh, watching YouTube, please subscribe, rate, review. If you're listening on the podcast, wherever you get your podcast, please do the same. Rate, review, share it with your friends. Tell them, welcome to the Simple Mind Sports Show.
As always, here at Silver Mines, we're brought to you by the best craft brewing in New Hampshire, White Birch Brewing down National New Hampshire address, please. 460 Amherst Street. Good side of Amherst Street. Uh, get on down to the brewery. Get on down, get some football in, maybe a little playoff baseball. If all baseball could be playoff baseball, it would be a hell of a Ooh. sport. And we'd be all drunks. And we would be all drunks. Because that was a, that was a drinking kind of get, day yesterday. That's the other thing, you know, four and a half hours worth of uh, of drinking. It's just. Did you drink those uh, those uh, time travelers, the triple IPAs that White Birch puts out? Woo! Four and a half hours of that. No, thank you. It's amazing that you have an apostrophe S after uh, to time travelers. You had more than one of those. Drink <laughs> well, responsibly, kid. <laughs> sure, I hear you. White Birch Brewing. They got the time travelers. They got the indulgence. Uh, a fancy little stout down there. Ooh, it's beer drinking good. season. Uh, go get something nice, crisp, refreshing. Um, if you can't get down to the brewery, then certainly get at your local beer store, wherever you get it. So the Simple Minds boys sent you White Birch Brewing. So we are Bill. We are Billless mm. here, Raymond. Um, thank, thank God. I feel like some of these are some of our best shows. I didn't want to say it, but yes, <laughs> I, <laughs> as well. Everyone's <laughs> calm, cool, relaxed. No one's worried about getting click clacked, you know? That's all. Yeah, I know that on your end, you're worried about getting shit on and made fun of and shot. On my end, I'm just trying to find the best place to jump in on Billy Rambles so he doesn't do 40 minutes of his own uh, jibber jabber. So <laughs> it's uh, it's stressful in our own ways that we don't have to uh, worry yeah. about. On Mine's life like and death. Yours just is trying to get a word in. That's all. Yeah, yeah which is basically death to me. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Red Sox Yankees. Yeah. What an atmosphere. What a game. I mean, the first uh, playing game for the Red Sox franchise since they started it, whatever it was, I'm sure Bill would have this fucking number, but I want to say five years ago, something like that. No, I think it's longer than that. Okay, fine. 10 years ago, call it whatever. Somewhere sure. in between there. Uh, first time the Red Sox have seen it. Cert certainly first time Fenway has seen it and it did not disappoint. And they got the win and they jumped mm -hmm. all over that Bitch boy, Garrett Cole, toot, toot. Give me Evaldi over Garrett Cole in a big game any day. We just saw the true colors of that guy when the sticky icky mandate came down in June. He was front and center, like almost oh, brought to tears, tears mm -hmm. not being able to figure out how to pitch. And the rest of his season was up and down. He had some gems in there, certainly. Um, but anytime the spotlight was on him, he shit his pants. And that was certainly the case in Boston on, um, what night was it? Wednesday? Yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, obviously Bogart's got things jumped off with that two run home run in the first inning. Um, the guy couldn't, he didn't make it two innings. Garrett Cole is a fucking puddle. And on the other side of all the is dealing. It do, you was know who, do you know who Garrett Cole reminds me of? Like I was trying to think about, about it on my way home tonight. Peyton Manning. Great, great regular season, you know, always combating for the Cy Young because he's like a dominant pitcher in the regular season. But once that postseason comes, he just shits down his leg and he is just a puddle of himself. But yeah, that's, that's like the best way I can always think of Garrett Cole. Like, great regular season, come playoff time, you are a fucking choke artist, my friend. He does have a World Series ring and he was pretty good with the Astros. I, I, I mean, I think before that, uh, he was just okay with the Pirates. I think he was number one overall pick. And he was disappointing with the Pirates organization. He didn't live up to his bill. He got traded to Houston around the same exact time that Max Scherzer and everybody else using the spider tack uh, mm -hmm. started using it. And, you know, he caught fire. And that Astros team was really, really good. Um, and I don't think the pitchers were using trash cans. They were just using spider tack. So I think that's a big part of it. I don't think that that it was made a big deal of the middle of the season. And, and that story went away. The spider tack story went away. Max Scherzer. Certainly hasn't missed it. You know, this like the steroid era uh, situation. Yeah. The guys that are really good rise above this shit. And I don't think Garrett Cole is really good. I just think he's good. He's certainly not $345 million good. What a debacle that is with that organization right now. They're, I mean, they're in the, they're in the uh, lower 20s for the minor league system. I mean, their payroll is off the charts right now, and they just can't win. They haven't been relevant in a very long time. They haven't been World Series bound in a very long time. And I think. I'm not trying to jump ahead, but yeah, they, they definitely got to do something. Two and a half billion dollars spent on their salary since their last World Series appearance. Two and a half billion dollars. Not million, a billion. Billion. Speaking of millions and billions, just to jump back really quick, uh, baseball hashtag is not dead. 7.7 .7 million viewers on ESPN for that uh, game. Did a 19.2 rating in Boston, which 
uh, is fucking gigantic for Red Sox games. Generally, it's around one. So yeah. think about that. 19.2. Uh, night Red Sox Yankees playoff still has juice. And New York only did 11.2. So, you know, <laughs> losers, losers. I wonder what that, uh, just real quick. I wonder what that like 19.2 ranks for like the years, like how high that was for a playoff game for the Red Sox. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't real I don't know the ratings off the top of my head. I want to say the Patriots are in like the 30s or something crazy like that. Yeah, the Patriots are always four. a big draw. Yeah, because it's one week, one time a week, you know. But the Red Sox, you know, all summer, spring long, you know, you have them. But come playoff time, 19 2, that's fucking high. Well, uh, Pam Aaron Ray, why don't you jot that down in your little ledger as a, a little research project there? Oh God. Good luck. Let me find my crayons. No problem. Uh uh. So obviously the game went almost as well as it could have for the Red Sox. I could nitpick a little bit, pulling Evaldi after a leadoff home run around pesky pole, a little dribbler to Aaron Judge, and you pull him for Ryan fucking Brazier. The, I, I'm telling you, he's going to lose them a game in the postseason. I'm telling you right now. I know that Cora has trusted him, and I know he's been pretty good since coming back after like two years of missing baseball. But I can't – I don't trust that guy. I can't stand him. Uh, Stanton fucking rocked him. They got lucky. They got absolutely lucky on the play at home, uh, sending Aaron Judge home in a nice play by Kiki. Kike, nice play by Bogarts. Nice play by Plowecki to execute that. But Aaron Judge was out by, I don't know, 10, 12, 16 feet at home. I mean, what a fucking terrible call by the third base coach. It was one out. It was one out. You had first and third. You had Ryan Brazier in. Evaldi was mowing these fucking guys down. And uh, the nerds up top in Alex Cora. Uh, it's the third time we've seen these guys. You got to put someone else in there, Cora. I didn't like that move. It paid off for him. It was a little bit stressful there. The Yankees uh, helped you out a little bit, but nice play by Bogarts. I mean, perfect throw. Uh, Kike got the, you know, was backing up, got the throw. We saw that when, when Schwarber came in uh, with Verdugo in center field. We saw a couple times where they, they weren't playing uh, proper outfield defense. So I don't know. It was good to see. That was certainly the only real threat the Yankees made the entire game, which makes me ask the question, and I hate to go negative here, but Watching this Red Sox team all season the way we did, if they didn't jump out to that 3-0 lead, and if the Yankees put some pressure on them in the late innings, would they have cracked? Yep. Would they have cracked? Are they a, a front-running team, I guess is the question. Well, let me think about that. Yep. <laughs> yes, they would have. And that's what they got to do in the next series with uh, Erod tonight. They got to get out front early. I mean, that's a stupid cliche because obviously you want to get out early. But, I mean, you, you, if you light up the pitchers, get them all frazzled, you know, go to their bullpen, that's what you need to do. You need to get to these guys early, and that's what the Red Sox are known for. That's what they've been doing all season. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's tough against the Rays, who arguably have the best bullpen and kind of almost want to get to their bullpen the way that they're set up. Yeah. Um, so it'll be a tough series. I mean, the Rays won 100 games for a reason this year, but the Red Sox are 11 and eight. I think it's the, it's 11 and eight, uh, in favor of the Rays this season, but the Rays have taken the last three or four series, um, in the back half of the season from the Red Sox. So, uh, before we get to that, let's talk a little bit, a little bit of roster management and how fucking stupid it is. Jesus Christ, baseball MLB. Can you not get out of your own goddamn way? You have to set the rosters for a five game series. Like what? <laughs> I get that tradition is tradition. This is the game was set up, but how? Oh, no, no, fucking no. Don't say that. Don't say that. that. Don't say that. I mean, every sport has changed. Every sport has evolved, like, to get to the modern times. Baseball has yet to do that. I mean, even with COVID going on, they still, yep, yeah, give, give me a roster. Give me a roster. Uh, no no ifs, ands, or buts. This is what your set roster is going to be. It's just, it's baffling. Why can't you just do day by day, game by it's game? so stupid. Now, uh, they have changed the, the rule, Raymond. 10 years ago, they did decide to let, if a player was injured in the series, you could replace that player. 10 years ago, and prior to that, if a player was injured, you just had to play a man down for the rest of the series. I don't get it. Uh, How fucking stupid is it? You have minor league systems with like 500 players in them, and they limit you to 25 guys for a five-game series no matter what. Oh, it's infuriating. Obviously, I bring it up because J.D. Martinez is a uh, lightning rod in this conversation. Rolled his ankle, you running said out. 
You spelled, you said pussy wrong. It's all right. <laughs> Running out to the outfield, rolled his ankle on second base. Unbelievable. Carabas came out and said, oh, yeah, the thing was ballooned up. You know, you really should feel bad for that guy. Yeah, ever heard of duct tape and fucking spit? Dude, get out there and fucking hit the goddamn ball. Ever heard of not getting injured running to the outfield? Well, I can't say that. I, I'm a little clumsy at times, especially when there's a little drinking involved. So, no, I, Dude, I, I can't. What are, you, what are you stepping on second base for? Have you ever seen uh, Rookie of the Year? Sure. That's how he hurt his arm. He fucking, he wasn't watching where he was going. He stepped on a baseball, and then he was a Cubs starting pitcher. He was 10. J.D. Martinez is 34. Yeah, your body works in different ways. Unbelievable. Anyway, uh, they made a decision uh, to keep him on the uh, ALDS roster. J.D. Martinez then is, in addition to Danny Santana, and um, they brought back Martin Perez, and they kept Austin Davis. And the big news out of this is all-star closer Matt Barnes was left off the ALDS roster as we move into this series. What a fall from grace, grace this guy had. Another sticky, icky victim. Yeah, Bill was very heavy on liking this move because of, I guess his uh, ERA, I'm not guess, but his ERA balloons. It's an all-star break, so... Yeah. 9.52, I believe, since the All-Star break. Yeah, so, I mean, it's understandable why they left him off. So, yeah, one last guy in that bullpen role that you have to worry about going in there and costing you a game. I guess Garrett Richards is still out there. Oh, yeah, but he's changed. He brought a jacket. Bullshit. <laughs> you better bring a fucking winter jacket. It's October in Boston. It's cold, baby. Oh, well, he's only going to pitch in Tampa. Only pitch in Tampa. Control, only climate control down there. That has, to be, that has to be the game plan for Alex Cora. Garrett <laughs> Richards. That would be my plan. You're Only like, oh, pitches and tip. Have Although like it's these big diagrams and fucking science analogies all over it. It'd be like jacket, <laughs> no jacket. Ah, oh, pitch him in Tampa. <laughs> Venn diagram: Tampa, Boston, jacket in the middle. Yeah, Garrett <laughs> Richards in Tampa. That's yeah. it. Although I think Tropicana is uh, temperature control. They might have it at a brisk seventy-two. Mm. So that's not long quite sleeves. San Diego eighty-four. Yeah, long sleeves. Long sleeves for Garrett Richards. We'll see. Um, <laughs> the uh. Oh, 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 I forgot about this. The Yankees, you kind of mentioned it, but they're fucking dead. Before mm-hmm. I, I want to touch on a little bit more of the Red Sox race, but before we do, let's stomp on this grave of the Yankees just a little bit more. They're dead. I said this last year, this franchise needed to completely gut itself. Too. No identity at all. Their pitching staff, their whole starting rotation is garbage. Outside of Garrett Cole in the regular season, they're absolute garbage garbage their pitching staff in general sucks their bullpen is supposed to be one of the best of the leagues shit their pants constantly you still got that fucking wife beating uh murder attempting piece of shit chapman out there who sucks now mm-hmm. there, there's no I, aaron judge is the only guy worth his salt in that what? lineup for what'd a baseball say? player what'd you say <laughs> fucking two two that one too there buddy their 10-year MLB draft, Aaron Judge, who's 29 <laughs> years old, 30 years old. Their farm system sucks. It's it, I, I know it's in the lower half of the uh, league. They they don't have a farm system. I mean, uh, Brian Cashman's been there for 30-plus years, and, I mean, I think he's worn out his welcome over there. It's time for a change over there. It's time for a new uh, identity over there at Yankee Stadium. And I'm pretty sure Aaron Boone has someone's hand up his ass because he's just a sock puppet. He is one of the most doofiest, dumbest. I haven't seen him make a adjustment chain. Like he just, they give him the spreadsheet, even worse than Cora, who I think has a little bit of a sack. Like they give him the spreadsheet and that's it. Mm-hmm. He, the guy just fucking does nothing. What a wet blanket Aaron hmm. fucking Boone is. Hmm. I wonder if we know someone like that that just does nothing. Just comes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, his teeth are shattering to the. The fucking moon right now. <laughs> Enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, how about the Red Sox? So they celebrated their uh, their win over the Nationals to get to the wild card game with champagne and speeches. I haven't seen anything. I would assume they celebrated the win over the Yankees. I would have celebrated yeah, yeah, the win over the it. Yankees more than I would celebrate over the Nats. Oh, they they celebrated more champagne. So. Uh, so from a fan perspective and probably from every perspective, this is a successful season for the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, it already is. I would have, if they lost that game, I would have said no because of the way that they lost the division and the way that they handled the, uh, the, uh, the deadline. Trade, trade on, yeah. If they lost that playing game and they missed the actual playoffs, I would have said, no, you, you underachieved after 
you overachieved. So, but they're in. They, it's a successful season. Do they think that? Do, are they going to now rest on that? Or do you yes. think this team is going to come out here and actually try to win this series and like, and come with this 2013 Red Sox mentality of really, really honestly, let's go. We can win this thing. We can do it. Or are they the front runners that we think we they are that we talked about before? And as soon as trouble kind of hits, we might see them fold to a better team. I think if they make this a competitive series and still lose, I think it's a win for this season because, you know, Tampa Bay won 100 games. We weren't supposed to be there. We were supposed to be a rebuilding year, building up our farm system kind of thing. But if they get swept, oh, fucking forget about it. That's a failure. I mean, you just, you know, you played well all season long. You got to this point. And then you get swept by the Rays and don't like make an effort and make it look like a like get blown out kind of thing, you know, like every yeah. game non competitive, you know, just kind of the mirror opposite of what you just did with the Yankees. So I think if it's a competitive series and you lose, it's a win for the se- season. If you get blown out and your fucking doors knocked off, this is a failure because you didn't even come to compete against Tampa. Yeah, I don't know if I'll go as far as failure because you made the playoffs. It's a it's a long season, but I, I will say it's it's a bad way to end. It's a sour taste in your mouth, and it it might be more indicative to what this team actually is that you just got hot for indicative means uh, more on the nose, Thank close you. to. I didn't want to write that down because that was going to be a lot of words. Uh, indicative. Okay, that's easy enough. Yeah, all all hands on dick. <laughs> I I just. Yeah, it's going to be a sour taste if they lay down and die to a better team. Um, You know, if they lose in four or five and it's competitive, yeah, you know, everyone's going to be smiles and happy and pom-poms and light out the fireworks over there on uh, old Yaki Way. What is it? What is it now? Bill wouldn't know. What's the – they got rid of Yaki Way because he was a blatant racist. Um, For hundreds of years, they left that there or something like that. Yeah, we we called that, though. We said that. I mean, Heimblum – was going to uh, call victory if they made the wild card game. They did, and they called victory. They said it was a successful season. They celebrated with fucking champagne, and uh, I would have toasted them for that if they lost that Yankees game. But they didn't. They won. So successful season. Uh, yeah, they I, they do still need to end it on a high, even if it's a loss to the Rays in the series. You can't Just make it competitive. Yeah, you can't go out there and get swept, which they might, though, because the Rays are good. Um, it's Erod versus Shane McLennan in game number one. McLennan uh, has been the best pitcher against the Red Sox this season, one and one record with a 2.81 ERA. Second after him is Drew Ross. Uh, Ross, I never pronounced this guy's name right. Rasmussen. Rasmussen. Ras, I want to say yep, Rasputin. Don't no, Rasmussen. The. Uh, the Russian gypsy who like started world war one, but no Drew Rasmus, uh, 2.3 ERA. So good starting pitching, surprisingly terrific lineup from the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, Nelson Cruz went down there and gave them a, a bolt of energy. Uh, Brandon Lowe is a guy that has crushed the Red Sox this season. And in 291, five home runs and 12 RBIs against them. Martin Perez, is supposed to be the, uh, or Austin Davis, take your pick. He's supposed to be the lefty specialist to get the, day. to get Brandon, Brandon low out. Good luck there. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, your predictions as the baseball guy, how do you think this race Red Sox series is going to go? ALDS series is going to go. I think it's going to go six. I think the Red Sox are going to make it a little, yeah, they only better. play it's best of five. So, oh, it is best of five. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this is going to go, uh, three games. I think we're going to get swept <laughs> since you just fucked me up there. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Shot that down for a fucking video. You got. Uh, yeah, no problem. Um, <laughs> completely lost my fucking train of thought. What's your thoughts on the Yankee uh, Red Rays and the uh, Red Sox? Yeah, no, I think game seven is going to be a hoot. Uh, Thank God Bill's fucking shivering to death. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry. Yeah, I completely lost my fucking truth. I thought I was looking something up and then, yeah, no, I, I, I they're not going to get swept. They'll win one. I, I give them, a, I give you got Chris Sale going in game two. You got Nathan Evaldi in game three coming back at Fenway, coming off a high, obviously, against the Yankees. Big game pitcher. You know, he's established himself as, frankly, one of the best big game pitchers in Red Sox history as hyperbole as that might sound compared uh his 2018 run compared to that wildcard game 
you know, the sample size is small for pitchers like that, and he's up there. So between Chris Sale and Evaldi and the lineup, yeah, I give him a shot to take a couple. If you leave uh, Tampa one and one, you come back. If Evaldi can give you a good, uh, you know, keep you in it. Yeah. If you get up two one, I mean, it's a, this is the thing about baseball players. This is why all baseball should be October baseball because it is the outside of hockey, it's the biggest crapshoot in, in professional sports uh, playoffs. Literally, you know, anybody could win it. Uh, real quick, though, everyone's been saying Chris Sales should be going game one. Uh, I beg to differ because uh, the two games he has pitched, he's gone six innings and then three and two-thirds innings, and he's allowed 16 hits and seven runs against the Tampa Bay Rays. So the Tampa Bay Rays have Chris Sales' number, and I am a little worried about game two. Well, Chris Sales obviously coming off Tom, Tommy John surgery, and his last couple outings have been short. We got to wonder if there's some fatigue setting in after not playing baseball for almost well, two this was, years. This was September, early September that he went against Tampa. So, but even still, I mean, that look, Chris Sale has a tendency of slowing down at the end of every single season of his entire career. Mm-hmm. The guy's six, six, like 98 pounds. He just doesn't have the body to keep up with it. So he comes back after Tommy John surgery, not competing for all, over a year. Um, look good to start the season, look pretty competitive. It's been a little bit of a downward progression from there. So yeah, uh, Chris sale game two is certainly not a lock, but I like the guys with Moxie and I like the guys with guts when you put them in high pressure, big situations doesn't mean everything, but I could very easily see Erod getting shelled for four runs in the first inning of game one and Chris sale going six strong, just just because of the way that of their makeup. So well, yeah, Ira last, last game against Tampa Bay, three and two thirds innings, eight hits, six runs. And yeah, it's not good. Yeah, there's probably a lot of pitchers out there with bad numbers against the Rays. They're pretty good. Uh, finish up on baseball. Dodgers walk it off versus the Cardinals. Again, play a fucking baseball. I mean, it's just, it's exciting to watch. And just to give you a chance to toot toot, Trey Turner, who was not a throw in, but he was an add on to the Max Scherzer trade from the Nats to the Dodgers who sent basically their whole farm system over there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Trey Turner is excellent playing very, very well and getting Mm -hmm. a lot of nods for future MVP of the league who Mm -hmm. you had as a, and uh, you two motherfuckers allow me to (laughs) fix off at me. (laughs) You drafted him in your 10 year MLB uh, franchise draft. And, um, but that was based off fantasy baseball stats. So you're, you know, and, he is considered a future MVP of the league. There you go. Toot, toot. Toot, toot. Suck it, Bill. Can I tell you something? You may. Uh, I've been a little bit groggy most of the day. I thought you were going to say grumpy. Go on. <laughs> I woke up uh, in a haze. I didn't hear an alarm. I didn't hear my kid crying. And you know why? I sprinkled a little CBD on the bottom of my feet last night. And I'll tell you. Like a rock. That a boy. Like oh, a boy. fucking rock. If you want to sleep like a rock, uh, Chevy, also, if you're listening, you can be our next. Like uh, a rock. Or Bob Seeger, if you're looking to revamp that career. Uh, if not, then let's stick with back to basics. Dr. Tom down there in Rhode Island, who is your number one CBD. Uh, Bill will call it a supplier, but let's call it an educator. He is uh, he's there for you to set you up with uh, a personal uh, personal CBD prescription, uh, medical marijuana, actual prescription, whatever you need to soothe whatever is bothering you. You need a nice night's sleep like me. Rub a little bit of that on your feet. Night, night. If you got a shitty shoulder like Billy Badwing, uh, you can take all the narcotics in the world, but it just might take a little CBD spray to feel better. If you got a terrible dog like Ray, whose name shall not be named. Judas. Judas. <laughs> That's what he calls him now. And he no longer comes for his food. <laughs> uh, put a couple pills in his in his food and, uh, you know, he stops barking. All, all of this is available at backtobasicsllc.com. That's B-A-K, the number two, basics, LLC. Dot com with every order of any of those t- uh, products, you get a free sample. You also get a personal email from Dr. Tom himself to see how things are going and see what he can do to help. So go to back to basics, LLC.com B a K the number two basics, LLC.com. Bye-bye. Stefan Gilmore.
Bye-bye. former NFL Defensive Player of the Year, Stephon. Gilbert. Former overrated <laughs> NFL Defensive Player of the Year. I've had a lot of toot toots on this show, but that might be my biggest fucking toot toot. No, Kyrie obviously is the biggest toot toot. Oh yeah, no, Kyrie is an <laughs> no, awful fucking piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stephon Gilmore, by all accounts, is a wonderful man, uh, a terrific person in the community, a better football player. Uh, 2019 defensive player year was not earned. That was overrated. However, uh, whatever. Um, two-time Super Bowl champion? Mm-hmm. Two-time Super Bowl champion, one-time Super Bowl loser. Mm. Wait, one time, I think. No, they got oh. him after... Oh, they got him after Falcons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one time, 2018. But sealed it. Got that big interception who everybody saw coming. That 2018 uh, Rams Super Bowl... That throw by Jared Goff, talk about a Belichick. I mean, how did everybody saw that fucking play coming? Baited him right into throwing that son of a bitch. Brought the house, Stephon Gilmore waiting there. The better play in his Patriots career, of course, was the AFC Championship game, the diving deflection on a fourth down uh, uh, Bortles to whoever he was throwing it to. That would have been a touchdown if he let that go. Patriots lose that game. Stephon Gilmore knocks it down. Patriots get the ball back. They win. Onto the Super Bowl. Uh, he's gone. So obviously we know that the history here, he wanted a uh, extension or more money last year. The Patriots just gave him a pay bump of $8 million this year. He came in and wanted more money. Also coming off a blown quad was different reports. will tell you he was able to play different reports will tell you he wasn't able to play. I think the writing is on the wall that the Patriots and Stefan Gilmore could not come to an agreement with the, with the contract. So they put him on the PUP four weeks into the PUP $400,000 per week. Later, the Patriots decided to say, bye-bye. Uh, it's time to go. Either you're not playing for us at this number, or you won't sign the contract that we want, or we need cap space, which by the way, I don't know if you've seen this, Adam Schefter reported they had $54,000 yeah. in cap space when they, yeah. but Boston, uh, the Boston cap space guy on Twitter, who is always right, had him at about $3 million. So fuck Adam Schefter in his, in his uh, dick tugging of Belichick to make that look a little bit better. I, I trust Boston sports info guy. Yeah, of course. Anyway, your take on uh, Stefan Gilmore with this simple, very simple question. Was this the worst managed asset in Belichick's history? The answer is no. That was Tom Brady. Was this the second worst managed asset in, in Bill Belichick's history? Yes, because you only got a six route. Well, Jimmy G, too. You I mean, from all reports, you could have got two first from Cleveland. I mean, mm, Stephon, that's close. Gil- Stephon Gilmore leaves for the sixth round uh, pick. And but let's nah. but let's remember, the Stephon Gilmore, it's not just trading him now. They should have traded him last year. Paul Perillo had him traded him at the deadline last year for uh, basically what the Titans gave away for Julio Jones, which was a second and a fourth. Yeah. I think. And they got a six back or something like that. Um, That was basically the deal on the table for Stefan Gilmore starting last year, all the way until he blew his quad. So yeah, Jimmy might be worse. If you could get a a handful of firsts from the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll go third, but yeah, I mean, you should have got rid of him when you could, because obviously when you're playing at a high level like that, you know, coming off the reigning NFL defensive player of the year, you should be getting as much assets back as possible. You let him play. He gets injured, worst-case scenario, because now you can't trade him in the offseason type situation. You know, he sits on the bench, uh, training camp. He doesn't participate, you know, doesn't want to go on the field to show you that his quad's better. He wants more money to, until he goes out there and proves it. So, yeah, it's one of the worst-case scenarios recently that Bill Belichick has had to deal with. I agree. Um, moving past that, though, clearly the asset was mismanaged. But in terms in real time, and what Stefan Gilmore meant to this team and what it means right now, it's not a big, it's not as big of a blow as people are talking about. It, I won't toot to this one because I don't think I, you know, we had a discussion about it, but I, I Stefan Gilmore is never going to be a uh, plug and play. You start winning games when he came back to this, to this. He hasn't played football in over a year. Yeah. Or he won't until he gets back on the field. He hasn't been 2019 player of the year since 2019. He had a bad 2020 season. He had some good spots, but he didn't look good. 
No, he got it. he got burned a lot too. Of miss uh, uh, wrong plays. I remember him pointing out, you know, he wasn't getting cover over the top where he thought was. You know, it was only man coverage. He was getting burned a lot. I mean, you're getting older. Father time always wins, man. And you're getting older. You're over thirty now, and that's a. Uh, one of those uh, phases, you know, like when a running back gets 30, you know, they're off you know, old yeller, take them behind the basement and fucking shoot them, you know, kind of thing. Cause they've, that's, that's far, that's fucking way off. <laughs> take them behind the basement. basement old yeller went into a field shed. or something. Oh, you think I read the book? The barn. Like it's the old barn, shed, basement, same fucking Take thing. them behind the basement. Like, <laughs> you know, suburbia. Get- just beat him with a bat because gun, yeah. gun, gun violence. Oh, no, but you're over 30. Accepted. I mean, your your NFL career is pretty much on the downward tra- trajectory. That's well, a then. thank you. So yeah, one of those things. I mean, Bill Bill likes to get rid of players a year earlier than they should, and I think that he should have got rid of them last year. And this was a blunder on his on his part. Yeah, absolutely. 31 years old, blown quad, refused to go on the field and show him that he was healthy. Um, I was with the with the Patriots on wanting them wanting them to see that I expected him to come back and play with the Patriots. That might be a black mark on you that he went down to Carolina and is reportedly going to play on the same contract that he wouldn't play for you on in New England. So, you know, that doesn't look great. But, you know, through this whole thing, both camps have said that it's been mutually respectful and they're all. You know, they're, they're not seeing eye to eye in the contract, but there's no ill feelings there. And no. it seemed like they ended like that. So I don't know. It's a little bit weird that he's going to go play for somebody else for that money and wouldn't with the Patriots. Let's just see what he looks like. Like I said, um, I think they felt confident in their secondary after that Bucks game. I do too. Jalen Mills has um, looked better week after week as that number two cornerback exclusively. Uh, Jonathan Jones, we know is a solid slot. And JC Jackson is what you, what'd you call him last week? A one, one B corner. Mm-hmm. not quite a number one, but a one B mm-hmm. um, obviously their depth is an issue. If one of those guys goes down, they're in trouble. They're in trouble. Joe Juan Williams is not something, I, not oh, someone I need off. seen out there all the time. No, thank you. The kid they got from Baltimore, Sean Wade has high potential. Uh, he needs to learn their system. He needs to get better. He's been a healthy scratch for two straight weeks. That might be the kid you see jump in. And is Michael Jackson, he, he still out there or do they cut him? He's on practice squad. Practice squad. He was an undrafted guy that looked good for a little bit. Um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is don't get hurt. I don't, we're not going to feel no. the the loss of Stefan Gilmore. No, fuck no. We're just not, the Patriots aren't really going to feel it. So best of luck to him. Thanks for the memories. Uh, what we are going to feel is the offensive line that has sucked royally for the Patriots about to suck worse. The whole line basically is on the COVID list or not out. Uh, this was your starting offensive line today at practice. At left tackle, James Ferentz. Who? At left guard, Alex Redman. Who? At right guard, Will Sherman. Who? At right tackle, Drake Johnson. Who? And David Andrews was back at center. Oh, I know him. Yeah. Uh, not great. Not great. But we had this text exchange. I honestly don't know if it could look that much better than it's looked at the beginning of the season. I honestly don't know if it could look make look that much worse. I mean. Yeah. I was going to say worse. Yeah. Worse. Uh... No, it's been awful. It's been the one of the worst lines in football well if heron gets more playing time than any of these guys that i've never heard of before it's gonna get a lot worse and i feel like you're lucky that you're playing houston this week because if you were playing a real capable defense that could get after the quarterback uh mac jones we'd be saying praying in a cornfield saying pray with me for us pray with me yeah i agree with you but uh, yeah the, the texans is a, is a nice break for them um and that's probably that maybe that's where my head's coming from is i don't think it's going to look any worse than it's looked already. And if some of these guys are just COVID lists and they got to pass through some negative tests, I I would expect to see them on the field. How long is Trent Brown going to be out with this fucking calf injury though? He was out all last year with it, right? So there's a good chance he's out all this year with he's big and fat and uh, doesn't don't, 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 sorry. Don't. Uh, I, I forgot here to go with predictions because it's, I'm afraid to make predictions against this game, against this game with for the Patriots. If they lose against the Texans, those seasons over, there's no point in paying attention. Um, but I don't, I don't have full confidence. They're going to beat the Texans. I don't either. <laughs> I, I don't, don't either, man. I don't, I don't have full confidence. The Texans have obviously 40 to zero against the bills is a, is disgusting and embarrassing, but so now you're bringing that into play this week. You just got yeah, and I, you, and 
I told you in the early lines, I thought the Texans would cover because I didn't think that defense was that bad against the Bills. It was a 16 and a half point spread. I thought they'd at least fucking hold them within three scores, make it competitive. No, maybe the Bills are that good. I don't know. But I don't think the Texans are as bad as 40 to nothing. They're clearly not good. Davis Mills should the defense should hold him to under 20 points. I just can that can the Patriots offense go get 21 points? I don't know. Yeah, the defense has to have a couple scores this game. I think in order for them to win. So let's see how bad this boogeyman 3.0 is going to be. So we'll find out. Jamie Collins is back. We haven't got a contract yet, but he was at practice. No. Uh, was at practice. We're at number 30. Everyone made a big fucking deal about that, but no one gives us a contract. I assume vet minimum. Uh, is he going to be, is he going to be a difference maker? I expect them on the field on Sunday. Um, Van Noy and Hightower have looked slow and kind of out of place at times. Hightower Josh, was on, uh, Van Noy was on the injury report again with a, that fucking neck injury. Okay. So, uh, I think Jimmy Collins is nice depth. I think he's good energy. Uh, he's a playmaker when he's engaged, he's not always engaged. He disappeared at basically the whole back half of 2019. Uh, last time he was here or 2018, whatever it was. Uh, so yeah, nice. I like it. We're all in favor of it, especially at a vet minimum. No problem. If, yeah. if you sacrifice Stephon Gilmore for Jamie Collins, is that a win? I don't think so, but I think it's more than that. Well, you're going to get more games out of Collins than you would Gilmore anyway, so. I guess. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see him get out there and make some plays. I th- I'd like to see him get out there and be in coverage, which I think you're lacking. Certainly in Uche, Hightower, Van Noy, those guys are getting burned in that. Um, Van Noy, so. too, with the Tampa Bay that he had the pass interference on, you know, so that's something Jamie Collins can do a lot better than Van Noy can do. We think so, and he knows the system well enough. Uh, it's, all right, well, I didn't put this in here, but uh, predictions, what do you got? Uh, save it for early lines, my friend. <laughs> Fuck you. This is the show. I see it being a very close game. The Patriots will win, but it's going to be very tight. I'll do 21-20. Yeah, I had the same thing. I had a 17-24 to 24 Patriots. No, it's going to be tight. I don't, yeah. I mean, Look, I thought the Patriots could score on Tampa. If you couldn't score on that defense, <sighs> You can't score on any defense. So it it's the Patriots offense versus the Patriots offense this week. Can they figure out their shit? If they can, then I can see him put up mid to, you know, 24, 28 points. I don't think they can. So 24 to, to 21 points is I think. I mean, they're... I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm going to be wrong. I think it's going to be a very tight game and a lot of, a lot of mistakes you're going to see on. It's going to be a very sloppy kind of like a high school varsity, almost like a two way football game, you know, college two way football game. Yeah. Yeah, let's hope we're wrong. Let's hope we're wrong. Uh, a little spice up here, something new, a new segment. That we're, I, I need some kind of some kind of music or something. Ooh, Baywatch theme. Are you stupid or something? I'm as stupid as a stupid guys. Are you crazy? Or just plain stupid? Stupid as stupid does, Miss Blue. I guess. Are you stupid or something? Stupid as stupid does, sir. Uh, I'm going to call this the simplest minds of the week. Uh, I hope I pulled this uh, thing up. I don't know if I did. Oh, it's in the email. Um, 18 ex NBA players were charged uh, with health care fraud against the NBA, which. Is fucking dumb in its own right. Like so, the the story has it starting with Terrence uh, Williams, who was drafted by who was he drafted by? Was he played Memphis. for the Celtics for a second. I want to say Memphis, but I'll look it up. Go on. Anyway, Terrence Williams. I'm sorry, I forget he was drafted by. Uh, didn't have a long NBA career. None of these. A lot of these guys didn't have a long M- NBA career. But 18 of them, a swath of these players were Celtics players at one point in time, including Glenn Big Baby Davis, who's the least surprising to be the first one on our simplest of minds. Did you know his first name was Ronald? No. Oh, I knew just because I read it in the thing. Yeah, I did not know that. I saw that. I was like, wow, I learned something new today. Ronald Ronald Glenn Glenn Davis. Davis. Upset of the century that that guy's not white. Uh, Uh, New Jersey Nets he was drafted by. That's okay. Uh, in addition to that, Tony Allen, tough to see. Tough to see Tony Allen. I like Tony Allen. I, I, Everyone I, likes Tony Allen. Great. Two 2008 player. champions, but also Celtics player Sebastian Telfair was on there. 
I didn't um, like him. No, he was a good high school player, but didn't, uh, uh, you know, Not make anything. It, make anything. Anyway, uh, these guys uh, basically went to chiropractors and asked for $12,000 when it only cost whatever, $1,200, and uh, screwed the league out of $4 million. And ter- this Terrence Williams was taking a cut off of everybody to the tune of like 210 k And just the, the fucking list. Ah, damn it. The list. I'm going to look it up the one you sent me because the list is laugh out loud funny. Who wants to be part of a conspiracy with these names on there? Darius Miles. Remember with Darius the names Miles? on here are a bunch of fucking losers that failed out of the NBA. I got it right here if you don't got it. Oh, Milt Palacio was the other guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Some of the players include Milt Palacio, Sebastian Telfair, Telfair Antoine Wright, Darius Miles, Ruben Patterson, Eddie Robinson, Gregory Smith, Glenn, Glenn Davis, Jamario Moon, <laughs> Terrence Williams, Alan Anderson, Tony Allen, Shannon Brown, William Bynum, Elvis Eli, some other guys you don't know. So half the guys that you've never heard of flamed out of the NBA, and then the other guys just not the brightest bulbs in the chandelier, <laughs> including Tony Allen. If you ever listen to him on any type of interview or anything like that, no offense, but uh, you know, it didn't come from Harvard. Just so fucking dumb. <laughs> You made like millions. You, you made millions. Oh, you know these guys pissed it all away. Oh my God! And Even if your, con- your first contract was three million, it, you know it's the NBA. You're getting it in taxes, so you get a one and a half. You pissed that away. Either way, Jesus Christ, so fucking stupid. You don't think Darius Miles, as soon as he got three million dollars, spent it on jewelry, cars, and a stupid fucking house with a fucking Darius Miles got that second contract. Darius Miles got paid. Yeah, Darius Miles probably- got. Paid and then he and I, blew his Achilles, right? Or something? Yeah, or am I thinking of uh of another guy? Darius Miles got paid though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, idiots. Okay, that was our uh, simplest minds of the week. We'll try to keep coming up with a couple of those. It shouldn't be hard. Absolutely shouldn't be hard. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh all right, stay tuned for the after show. We'll talk a little NBA. But uh this has been the Simple Minds Sports Show, Friday headlines, October 8th. Bill, get better. Bye-bye. Bill, hope you die. Bye-bye. Uh, we talked about it at the front. That Celtics preseason look felt like a playoff game. Here's what also felt like a playoff game. The offense looks exactly the fucking same. I don't know if you watched it or watched any of it. Uh, what did I tell you? Brad Stevens got Ime, and I I told you this was going to be the same exact fucking offense that Brad Stevens was going to run, only it's a different guy with a different bout of culture, but it's going to be the same fucking offense. Terribly frustrating to watch. Just mm-hmm. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown going one-on-one in either wing, and that's it. That was the whole fucking thing. And then the reserves came in and, uh, you know, it looked more like it looked like the IT offense where you just had Dennis Schroeder running a high pick and roll with Al Horford or Robert. Boy. They No one looked like they knew what they were doing. I'll give them time. I always give the Celtics time. I That's like Ime. Stuff, I like yeah. Ime. You know, the best thing he said since he's got here is my players are not going to bitch at the refs. I'll bitch at the refs for them. They're not, they're not there. They've been told not to bitch at the refs. And I will say, I did notice that from Jason Tatum, the number one preseason. Uh, I get it. I get it. Preseason. Wait, I'll give it five games in the regular season. May you probably you'll see Tatum back to his old ways and his dookie stench. Fucking, yeah, it was a foul. What the fuck, man? And not playing defense while they're on a fast break. Bitching about fucking calls. I'll give him more than five games because I think Tatum uh, respects uh, Ime from his the times in the Olympics and wants to make it work. And I think that he may bring in, I think he's bringing a good, uh, uh, character to the team. Josh Richardson was quoted today uh, saying something like, in the scrimmages, they're trying to kill each other. Mm-hmm. You know, they're trying to kill each other, which led to a screaming match between Grant Williams and dot, 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 guess who? Marcus. Marcus Smart. Scal and Mike Gorman's uh, pick for captain of this team, Marcus Smart. Get this fucking guy out of Boston. Time's He's up. A- He'd be my last guy, last player on that roster to be captain of this team. Jalen Brown, Jalen Brown is a perfect guy because he's not the superstar of the team. He's the smartest guy in the room. Give that guy the captain. Let him lead this team. He, I, Udoka already said it. He said there's going to be probably two captains of this team. Who do you think that is? It's Jalen and Jason. 
Marcus Smart's not getting the fucking cash. It's their team. He said it. He said it. He also said Marcus Smart, uh, you know, uh, when asked about Marcus Smart, I mean, his talk about this, the whole offseason has basically been, you know, Marcus Smart needs to know his role. We're going to define that for him. We're going to define everyone's role this season. I think they know the problem with Marcus Smart. I, Marcus Smart still doesn't know the problem with Marcus Smart. He's still, he had a fucking terrible game. He had like three turnovers in a row to start the game, still launching threes with 12 seconds left in the shot clock. It's the same fucking guy. I, I will tell you this. Now, maybe this is a little bit of green team in me. I think Brad Stevens knows his team. We saw the moves that he made. I think he knows. I don't believe this shit that people are, that the Celtics organization is in love with Marcus Smart. I think Danny Ainge was in love with Marcus Smart. Like he was in love with every other fucking guy he drafted. Yeah. I think Brad Stevens is a heady enough basketball guy to know what the fucking problem is with Marcus Smart. He gave him a contract to dump him, to flip him. I hope, I hope you have to get this guy out of here. Give Dennis Schroeder Marcus Smart's money if you're going to do that. That guy looks like he can play and and play the way that they want the point guard to play. Create, play defense, be pesky. I hope there's a change, too, that, like, Marcus Smart goes to the bench and Schroeder starts on this team. That'd be nice. I'd love to see Schroeder, Jalen, Richardson, Tatum, Horford. Mm -hmm. I would, too. I second that. I like that lineup. Yeah. You got good defense. You got playmaking. You got guys that can that can score secondary. I think that's I think that's your best starting lineup. And yeah, you know what's going to happen? It's going to be the Jays that say, "Yeah, put Dennis in and fucking sit Marcus." That's what's going to take. So if Dennis plays his ass off and he gels well with the Jays, that's what's going to end up happening. I hope so. I honestly, I still think that there's this not a feud, but this like unspoke. Marcus Smart's got the longest tenure. Blah blah blah. Oh, the Jays are still like. They don't want to upset Marcus, so like, I just get this fucking guy out of here. Done. Well, actually, I get it, though. Like, I don't want to upset Bill. He's old. I don't want to get click-clacked. Maybe that's the whole problem with Jalen and Jason. Yeah. They don't want to get, they don't want to get click-clacked and upset you, the old man, you know? You don't want to step on the bitch's toes. Uh-uh. Uh, you see Ben Simmons and his his party were mad Yeah. that they got fined $300,000 for missing the preseason game, and then when the uh, Players Association told them they couldn't redeem it, they started to freak out. Mm-hmm. What, what a buffoon. Like, I would be firing my whole uh, inner circle, everything. Just you know, fucking like, quit. <laughs> He's the worst asset in the NBA. Well, the funniest part was my client only wants to play in California. Kings, no. Golden State, no. Lakers, no. Clippers, no. No one wants them. So it's like, you just shot yourself in the foot, douchebag. Now you're left with nothing. Why don't you just say, hey, we're going to go. He's going to change his ways. He's going to start shooting better, blah, 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 blah. You know? But yeah. instead, his PR department sucks. Well, he's a baby back bitch. He's a baby back bitch making $30 million a year for the next five years, and he can't shoot. One nothing raise. See ya. Eh, well, it was nice. It was, a good, it was a good time. At least it won't go seven. It's guaranteed not to go seven.
Hey, Mr. Dottie!